is Sunday, not Sunday. It is Wednesday evening. My days are getting crossed up. It's been so crazy with March Madness. It is Wednesday night, and that means it's time for another Auburn Family Night. This is all about you, the Auburn family, your comments, your questions, your calls. All that is on the table, and anything orange and blue, let's get into it right now. War Eagle Auburn family and a special War Eagle and welcome to those of you that consider yourselves part of our little family within that Auburn family, part of the E2C Network family. I use family a lot there. Thank you so much for being here, hanging out with us and spending some time on the live stream. If you're watching live, that's great. If you're watching the replay, that's great too. Wherever you're watching from, however you got here, whenever you got here, we appreciate you spending some time with us consuming our content and being a part of the conversation tonight. It is a Wednesday night live stream, and that means at 8 p.m. it is time for Auburn Family Night. This is the show where we get into anything and everything Auburn related. Now, sometimes we may push the boundaries of what that actually means and is, but if you can rearrange it, back, uh, re -rearrange it revert it, repackage it, all the re's, uh, back to the orange and blue, it is what we are going to do. Uh, obviously, I have a thousand different things that I want to discuss tonight, but I'm more interested in hearing about what you want to discuss tonight. So don't be shy. Get in on the conversation right now as you're coming in. Smash the like button if you think we've earned it. Also, let us know that you're here by saying hel hello, War Eagle. Uh, where you're where you're watching from is a great uh, way to kind of get you used to chatting. And here's the extra way tonight that you can take part in the show. You see the headphones are on, so that means we're taking calls tonight. Our phone line is open, brought to you by our friends at allthingsauburn.net. Please do check them out for a place, not just to stay at Auburn, but to have a complete and great Auburn experience. They bring you the call-in link. The li call-in link, for those of you that are wondering, is only available on YouTube. You hit the link. You can be on camera or off camera, and we can just hear your voice at the very least talking to me, and you can stay on for relatively as long as you want. We'll, we'll kind of move things along if we've gotten basically everything covered that you wanted to discuss and if we've got other callers. But um, please do call in. We'd love to hear and see some of you all tonight. But otherwise, get involved in the chat, and let's cover anything that you all want to discuss. see a lot of fine folks checking in from all over the place. Thomas, Mr. Bryant, good to see you, who is one of our Facebook subscribers. Thank you for doing that. By the way, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but if you're interested in joining the Conquer Club, you can do that a variety of ways by hitting the Join button on YouTube, subscribing on Facebook, or the most complete and easiest way is to do it is the uh, patreon.com slash e2c network through the patreon app but all those ways are great and get you into the door and helping us uh, support and keep the lights on here at e2c network tallahassee florida checking in we got leads checking in we got good people all over the place starting to line up uh, to have their voices heard tonight so let's get into it i see a question at the very start uh right here who says should we be worried about Bruce taking another job. What I'm curious about, OG, is where you're getting your information from and where not just you, but a lot of other people are getting this notion and information from. Um, I think sometimes we don't remember where we're getting these ideas from. And I'm not, I'm, I'm assuming a lot here, OG. I, please hear me on that. I know I'm assuming a lot. But I've, he I've heard this regurgitated a lot. In fact, we do TikTok live streams uh, about midday most weekdays, and I had this question asked earlier. So that's why I'm asking you for a little bit of clarification. Where are you hearing this from, and why are you getting this idea? Should we be worried about Bruce taking another job? Uh, my answer to that is not that I'm aware of and not that I'm some master insider, but I feel like I'd be privy to some stuff going down. Uh, I will tell you this. That if you're worried about Bruce leaving, don't be part of the problem that would make Bruce want to leave. What does that mean by, you know, fan interactions and fan opinions online that can get a little bit out of hand? Uh, don't make it a easily um, an easy place to leave. If you make it a, a less easy place to leave, then yeah, you should be worried. Uh, there's always um, going to be threats to someone come get your coach if they're doing well. And Bruce has done very well at Auburn. 
Um, he has re literally rebuilt the program in his image, and uh, that will never, ever be taken away from him. And that makes him desirable for a lot of candidates. But is are we in danger of losing him? Well, I would say you don't sit here and say nothing's ever possible, but I don't see any reason to be concerned about it, to be honest with you. Um, but I, again, I'd be interested to hear what what's got you hemmed up. <laughs> To quote my favorite radio show, what what are you worried about? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Give me some perspective on that, so maybe we can talk it out a little bit. We can. Uh, I love I love this phrase. Let's walk that out because a lot of times we get these ideas, these concepts, we make these statements, we make these stances, and we don't walk a narrative out all that much. Um, OG says Bruce is a great coach, and why wouldn't he want another? Or why wouldn't another school hire him? So it sounds like if I'm understanding your question and your follow-up, you're not necessarily worried about him leaving. You're just saying that he's a great coach. Why wouldn't he leave? Uh, and and I'm kind of questioning, are you, are you a, and you said we, but I'm just, I mean, I'm intrigued by the line of question here. Um, I, I agree with you. I think any, well, most schools would want Bruce Pearl on their staff. Uh, or as their head coach, to be honest with you. Um, I, I agree, but I don't see any reason to be fearful of that at this moment. I will tell you, and yeah, so if you're just curious in that thought, then I, if that's where we're going with this, I would say yes. I'm sure there's a lot of schools out there that would love to have him. And I do think that um, you would make sure that you make uh, this is a place that he wants to stay, a place that he uh, finds leaving to be not a desirable decision to make. Um, when the Indiana job came available, was it like three years ago? That was the one that I had some concern about. And, and I think if I understand what's going on with them lately, there were rumors they were going to fire their current head coach. And I think he's staying now. And I think maybe that's where some of this con conversation stirred up from. Uh, being that he has a lot of connections back to that area and he seems to have a very deep love for Indiana, I could understand where some of maybe that trepidation comes from with that job potentially opening up. Here, Here's my case to Bruce Pearl. He doesn't need me to make a case, but I'm going to make it. Um, if you go to some of these other bigger schools that have their big names, you'll always be on a list and not at the top of the list, especially with maybe the time he has left as a head coach. Um, at Auburn, he is climbing the ranks. If he's, I think he's got a, I forget how many games until number one on the wins list, but he can be the guy, the standard bearer at Auburn basketball and Auburn, believe it or not, has had some great history and great coaches, but he can be the guy, the standard if he, and he will be in most regards. If he leaves it obviously sullies things a little bit, but, um, to point blank. I don't see any reason to be concerned about it. No one's presented a case to me to be worried about it other than people being bored on message boards and social media and wanting to stir some things up. Um, so this sounds like you're just having a, a general conversation, which is perfectly fine. But as long as you're not worried, not truly worried about it, I wouldn't worry about it right now. Of course, things will probably change now that I've said that. <laughs> Uh, many schools would love to have him, but it's a matter of where he would want to be. I think he wants to stay at AU until he retires. I think if you kind of watch Bruce in, in just how he, he likes to carry himself, some of the freedoms that he has that I think uh, Auburn's a great place for him to be. And uh, I think he's got himself set up pretty nicely there for the future. Um, I, I just not have been presented with a case yet that legitimately scares me. It did maybe a few years ago when he didn't have what, he had as established uh, now at Auburn. Um, he's been invested in personally. His son has been. Now, here's one angle to think about this. I have heard it said by Bruce, like through a press conference, unless I misheard him, that effectively Stephen's the coach in waiting. Now, if he wanted to go finish his career somewhere else and go ahead and give it over to Stephen before he goes somewhere else, that could be a factor that plays into that. I don't see that happening right now. But it definitely could.
Let's try that. All right. I think we're back. Let me know if we're good now. I don't know what's going on here. I was getting some very weird notifications of, and it says my microphone is registering. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was weird. Sorry about that. I don't know why our mic, my microphone went off, but it sounds like it's good now. Uh, Bruce is a great coach uh, that lots of teams want, but Auburn is home. He loves it here, and I think I would agree with that too. Uh, War Eagle says Bruce loves Auburn too much to leave. Seems like we all mostly hold that sentiment. Thank you for that heads up there. And by the way, I, I will remind a few of you that if by chance you're watching on YouTube and the ads pop up, which is a new thing as of lately, um, which as a content creator, we're thankful for, but you may want to like refresh the stream because you probably will get a little bit behind in the chat and your comments may not come as quickly if a ad pops up on you on YouTube. Just keep that in mind. And we appreciate you guys watching on YouTube to watch the ads, at least have them pop up because it helps. <laughs> uh, just to pull back the curtain and tell you how the sausage is made all the way. All right. Well, that was a, I didn't expect us to get into that topic at the very start, uh, but it was a good one to start it off. And we can obviously still expound that a little bit. But what else is on y'all's mind? I'll set the table as I love to say, and please do call in if you'd like to. Don't be shy. I'm not going to bite your head off or be mean that much. Um, but obviously, yesterday was a big news cycle, um, a departure in football. Uh, J.D. Rim deciding to put his name in the transfer portal effectively. I have not seen him personally make a post about that, but it seems like it's true with the reporting. Same thing with K.D. Johnson. I've seen maybe some interactions on social media with him that say it's true, but I haven't seen him necessarily make a post about it. Um, so there's that as well. So two departures in the transfer portal, one for football, one for basketball. And if you look to today, I, I know not a, everybody loves to talk about women's basketball, but we're losing a guard for us, Sydney Shaw, who's going into the transfer portal. So three probably bigger departures for each of those programs. Um, it depends on what your best definition of bigger and contributions and all that is. But uh, that has been affected. And then, obviously, Mickey Dean stepping down uh, at the end of the year was announced yesterday. A lot of commentary on that and a lot of unnecessary commentary on that, too, <laughs> to be honest. We can definitely talk about that if you want, but I have a feeling that I'm part of a very um, a, a, a minority there that um, is, is not well looked upon in terms of his opinions about that. WT asks, what are your way too early thoughts on Auburn football? Well, you got to give me more specifics than that, WT. Like, what do you what do you want to know specifics about? Because to me, my to be honest, it's way too early to have any hardcore thoughts about it. I have seen the same footage online that y'all have uh, from people that are able to attend um, practices, and I haven't been able to glean anything from it of substantial quality. Now, if you listen to people on social media, they will tell you that um walker white um you know just blesses the ground that he walks upon and that he's the second coming of cam newton and same thing for cam coleman which may be true i i, I don't know but it's i i would not venture to say that uh, a few spring practices is enough to to go to the level some people um are going with it i think a lot of times we we form our opinions around uh what we want to see or what we don't want to see anymore and don't rationally think about these things. I, I'm excited as I always am for the future of Auburn football. Um, I just want to see a little bit of uh, A-Day stuff myself and then kind of watch what... I'll tell you this much. What happens with the transfer portal after spring practice is what's going to really start determining some of my opinions about this team. Um, at least where I'm sitting at right now. Uh, Thomas Manville with a good super chat. He's got a question with it, so we'll bring it. I'll give him, I'm gonna give him the recognition first, but we'll come back to that question. Thank you, sir. But way too generous. Um, what is your way too early thoughts on Auburn football ceiling and floor for wins? Oh, I'm gonna be boring. I'm gonna be so boring. <laughs> uh, well, I guess maybe you, you asked it that way for a reason because you've been here long enough to know that I always say eight and four. Uh, Floor, I think, is six and six. I would say ceiling, I would feel comfortable saying nine and three right now. Um, so that kind of tells you if you do the law of averages there, maybe I'm not so secure with that eight and four standard right now. Um, 
but I'm willing to be convinced that we can get beyond eight and four, but that's where, where I like to sit at every single year until proven otherwise. All right. Now we can take Thomas's super chat question. Thank you, sir, for that super chat. Uh, who is everyone's most likely quarterback to transfer out after spring practices over? That's more so a question for everybody. So let us know and be kind in your commentary. I know some of y'all can't quell that, but be kind in your commentary. Um, who is your most likely quarterback to transfer out after spring practice? And let me add on to that, Thomas. Will anybody transfer out? It's a it, it's a limited possibility, but it's still a possibility that nobody may transfer out. I doubt it, but it's possible. Uh, Brian asked on top of that, have they announced the starting quarterback? No, they have not announced the starting quarterback, nor will they need to really announce one technically until uh, fall practice is well underway. If there's ever a true and when I say true, please hear me when I say this. Every year, every time we come around, every position's open. Every position is open if you ask the coach every single practice. Um, whether or not to degree that is true is up for debate, but it is the way they approach it. Uh, Peyton, uh, the way I've expressed this and had people trying to realize this is that Peyton Thorne is your starting quarterback until proven otherwise. and. You need to be okay with that. Not you, Bryant, but everybody, a large portion of our fan base. You need to make peace with that. You need to have a reality check about that. And you need to figure out how to be a supportive fan of that person and not look for every single opportunity you can to disparage the guy. He's your starting quarterback until proven otherwise. Now, you may get a formal announcement later on down the way, We'll see if they even feel the need to. Uh, to go back to Thomas's question on top of this, who is everyone's most likely quarterback to transfer if we walk that out a little bit based on what I said and my opinion is? You know, Peyton Thorne's a starter. Uh, Walker White appears to be the heir apparent. Well, there's two guys that have been here much longer than Walker White has. So what happens with them? Well, Holden has been in this depth chart for quite some time. Holden Garner. He, um, has had very limited opportunities to show what he can do in game situations. And it's been very mixed results. We've heard a lot of good things, especially last fall. I think it was about how well he was performing in practice, but that's about it. That's about it. Like that's kind of what that's the facts of what, well, and even that's just opinions about what was happening in practice, but that's what we can take away from that. Hank Brown. What do we have practice? Very, even more limited game time, I would say, just because it's only been one year. But he had a great, at least, and I want you all to remember the context of it was great compared to what else was going on in the field in that bowl game. His bowl game performance at the end of time against the backups of the backups against that opponent. Not taking away anything from his opponent, his, uh, who he was up against. You can only play who's out there, but let's be real about it. Playing the backups of the backups. Um, so having all that information in there, Walker White just got here. It stand to reason he's not going anywhere. Peyton Thorne's your starting quarterback until proven otherwise. He's not going anywhere. You typically have three main guys. It's very rare that you can have four main guys. I doubt that Hank Brown's going to go anywhere because he, he was brought in with Hugh Freeze. We walk that logic out. If there is someone to leave, maybe it's Holden. And I'm not wishing that at all because I would love for him to stick around and find a way to start next year. Because what happens? I think, and I I, I'm a, I see a lot of your comments. I'll get to them in a second. This is probably an area that I'm trying to grow in. I have this glorified concept that the best way to have a starting quarterback is for them to be here for their complete three or four years and be that all the way through. And there is some value in that continuity. Love that all that. Unfortunately, I just don't think that's the reality anymore, especially with transfer portaling going to the NFL draft early. I feel that the best that you can hope for is two years out of a starting quarterback before they leave slash um, other circumstances come into play. 
leave whatever the way it is is really what it comes down to. I think if you if you walk this out, Peyton Thorne finishes out this year. Holden gets a few more minutes. He gets the starting job next year. Walker can redshirt and save himself a little bit. Holden gets to finish his final two years. If I've got his dates right, he would be a technically a sophomore this year, a redshirt sophomore. He may be listed as a junior, but I'm sure he has five years of eligibility. Uh, that would give him two years. And then once he's gone, Walker could step in for the next two years. The people that come in behind him can step in. And, and you see what happens here? It's a lot like what happened at Alabama with their quarterbacks. You saw them for about two years, and that was it. I hate to say it, but it worked for them. Why couldn't it work for us? That's my perfect scenario now, changing from the the long-term starter concept, but I know that not a lot of people want that. WT says, I'm happy with Thorne being the starter with extra time practice. I think he will do very well, especially with the upgrade at wide receiver. We all hope, right? <laughs> upgrade um, and performance, not in qual in people, in performance at wide receivers and the offensive line will greatly help whoever is at that quarterback. If Bo Nix couldn't do it, nobody else is going to do it, at least that's, that we've seen thus far that, that we've had available at Auburn. Thomas says that every position is open until it's time to play. The front runners are the front runners. Open competition means you get more reps based on performance. I, I think so. Can we, if I had like a, you know what? You know what, Thomas? I have not been practicing doing this, but you know what we're going to give you? Now come through. <laughs> I really hope it did. It was a bunch of people applauding Thomas. <laughs> ah, anyway, uh, that I don't know if that came through or not, but that was a big bummer if it didn't. That, that was a good comment there, Thomas. I agree wholeheartedly with your assessment on that. It's almost like you're a student of the game or something like that. Go figure on that. Anyway. All right. Uh, Michael, good to see you as well. Got a lot of people starting to check in here now. Make sure y'all are smashing that like button as you come in here. What is going to determine how well our quarterbacks and running backs do is going to be how good our offensive line is. Amen, brother, and twice on Sunday. I would say um, that is the biggest and has been the biggest issue for quite some time. So um, wide receivers have definitely become more of an issue as time has gone on, but – if you can block, if you can tackle, you will not win the game. And we're talking specifically about that front unit, right? You know, look at, he knows, he knows. Do I have another thing for that? I wish I had another, uh, like, good little video clip for that. I don't have a good one for that. I got to start using those more. Uh, let's see here. Coach Caddy coaching on Bo's old team. Like, Bo's. Oakland Raiders? Is that what you're talking about? Is it about like Bo Jackson? You got to be careful with the bows now. You got to tell me which one we're talking about. <laughs> it's, it's a little confusing these days. Bo Jackson, Bo Nix. I'm sure there's other bows I'm missing. Uh, if that's what you meant, and I, I thought that was the case, that he went to the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, uh, I'm happy that he found a landing place after um, leaving Auburn. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that we'll see Cadillac back someday. Um, hopefully, you know, for both parties in this way in a long period of time, meaning he's having a lot of success doing his own thing. We're having a lot of success doing uh, our own thing and we come back together. I I'm going to, I'm going to really cheese this up right now. I don't know if anybody, I'm going to put myself in my time period too. If you ever watched the um, boy meets world show, there's a line in there and it's about the little love dynamic there, but the, the girl says in this poem she reads, and that's, it's probably, I should quote the poem. She says, you do your thing, you do my thing. And if we end up back together, it's beautiful. That's, that's kind of what I, and I talk about caddy. That's what I think about. Hopefully it'll come back together and be beautiful one day and on good circumstances for both. Meaning that we're talking about, we are not changing coaches ever again until Hugh freeze is ready to retire. And then Caddy steps in. <laughs> the likelihood of that all playing out that way is very minimal. Uh, but um, I think it's probably best that he flourishes on his own for a little bit 
because he, he did so much for us. And then we uh, flourish on our own too. And if we come back together, it's beautiful. Uh, since we talked a little bit about NFL, is the XFL started already? Have, have we looked at like rosters to see which who's on what team and stuff like that? Has anybody done that? Or is the X, I thought the XFL was either supposed to start this week or the next. Cause I remember seeing their announced start week and I was like, that's in the middle of March madness. Why would you do that? Uh, hopefully it's this week. So there's less games for them to compete with. But I ask that and I bring that up because I'm curious if anybody is wa- going to watch it slash follow some of the Auburn players that'll be on there. I, I don't want to, let y'all listen to all the typing that'll take place um, if I do that. So uh, if I start typing and looking at myself, but anybody knows that information, feel free uh, to share it. All right. What else is on y'all's minds? Anybody still into March Madness? I hope you are. I hope you haven't given up on March Madness just because Auburn's out of it doesn't mean you shouldn't love it. Uh, I can tell you that I think we're going to have a very interesting end to our bracket challenge. A lot of brackets are kind of tied right now and um, well, tied in different areas of the rankings of that. But um, who was it? I can't look that up. That shouldn't take too much typing. Let's, let's look it up real quick. I want to be able to tell you guys who is currently in the lead we go to groups e2c network and thank you to everybody who joined this year uh currently in the lead we have wordle is au1 picks uh and tied with coombs picks and then tied for third we've got t dog and brian fulcher friend of the show along with savannah hey savannah's so our top five we have two tied for first and three tied effectively for second, but really third, because there's two tied for first. Um, So that's kind of your ones that are competing. I will tell you that I am in a group of about three, it looks like, tie in the third tie. So, you know, maybe next year, listen to me when I tell you some things about the bracket. That's all I'm saying. We're not going to talk about how my bracket was last year, but we're going to talk about it this year. Isn't that convenient, right? Uh. The Rock owns the XFL now. I prefer the other league that the Birmingham Stallions in. Corey, I don't know if you 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 missed the news. They're merged now. They're all one league. So it's the the UFL is. I think I don't. They don't call it the X. They call it the what is it the? Let me look it up. I said I wasn't going to type a bunch of things because it'll get annoying. But uh, the United Football League uh, with the USFL. So it's no longer the USFL. It's no longer the XFL. It is the UFL. Uh, so your stallions are part of the UFL now and part of the the Rock League. Starts at the end of March. I think you guys are a little bit behind in chat too. Keep that in mind. You might have to refresh. Yeah. So this is the end of March. So I guess it's starting this week. Um, if we, I, that's one thing I want to do better is try to keep up with. Uh, some of our players in in these other leagues when the opportunity presents itself. I'm talking about like non NFL things because, you know, this is their opportunity maybe to get looked at for the next stage for the, the real big stage, which the NFL is the big real stage. And maybe they can actually make their way up there. Corey, where you been, man, you missed the announcement of the merger. The rock owns everything. Well, he and a bunch of others, but, uh, the XFL and the USFL have merged to the UFL and the stallions were one. of So they, they took the teams and I think they kept five from the USFL and three from the XFL. Maybe they explained it on a, on a broadcast, but um, yeah, by the way, your former offensive coordinator, Philip Montgomery is on, I think, I think he's on the stallions now. I could be wrong. Uh, Michael's cheering for the stallions in a repeat. Uh, Big Sim says, hi, I'm late. If in case you haven't heard, the NFL is finally doing away with tackling. You just stand there and tag them now. Well, that's flag football. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, listen, as our society becomes way more focused on ideas, emotions, and feelings, which I'm not saying you shouldn't on some degree, so don't hear me there. 
we're becoming uh, less able to cope with things. The reality is, though, is there's been some serious injuries that have happened with football, and I think some caution is available. But and this may sound harsh, and I'm sorry if it does, but the reality is, is when you sign up to do something, you should be resuming all risk. For instance, I'll give you guys a little bit of background. I, I'm a former zookeeper. Now, I didn't work with the most dangerous animals, but when you're signing up for that, you are essentially signing up to say, hey, I'm taking on some risk about what could happen here. As long as you follow the rules, nothing should happen. Same thing with jobs, any job, but like to jobs with perceived high risk and real high risk, uh, police work, firefighting, uh, EMS, uh, military, you know, you take on these risks. When you play the game of football, when you play, play sports, when you play the game of football, you take on some risk. And unfortunately, that risk may be life altering. We've lost sight of that, I think. Um, are you talking about the purchase of the XFL? Is that what it was? Is that what you mean, Corey? Give me a little context with that. I'm not sure what that was referring to. Um, but yeah. Uh, Big Simp says, I was in the military. Thank you for your service. Desert Storm vet didn't want to go, but signed up for it. Yeah. You, and listen, I, you know, there's something lost in today's society of even if you don't want to do something of just doing it. So thank you for doing that. Um, WT says, I agree that when you sign up for something, you are agreeing to the risk. It's just helpful to know what the risks are. The NFL has gone to great lengths to hide brain injury stat to hide brain injury stats. And that may be the case. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, but the reality is, is whether you were fully informed or not, you should still understand about what you're about to partake in. And it is some responsibility upon the party that's asking you to do it to inform you. And that's where we can get better. But when we, we take on these other things, it gets a little, it's a little daunting. All right. We got our first caller tonight. So let's go ahead and say hello. You know him, you love him. I'm sure he's going to take us to school. Mr. Manville, what's going on, sir? Where are everybody? How are y'all this evening? Hold a second. Hang on. I can't hear you. That may be me. Yep. And say something now. All right. War Eagle, y'all. They could hear you the whole time. When my mic went off earlier, it reset where the audio was. That's why I couldn't hear the applause that I gave you earlier. So <laughs> did you even hear that or see that? Yeah, I did. That, that was funny. That, uh, <laughs> That made me laugh. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty awkward over here on my end because the video starts playing. There's no sound. I'm like, well, this is awkward. So I'm glad it came through on y'all's end now. Anyway, how you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing great this evening. I hope everybody else is too. And I, I'll just go ahead and touch on your point, like knowing what you're getting into. Like, yeah, if you're playing the sport, you know you gotta. You know you're gonna have to work hard. You know you're gonna have to sacrifice things, and you know you could potentially get hurt. Yeah. And you know that with your job as well. Like I'm, I'm in the car wash business. I stand in front of rolling death machines on the day. I was board. about to say, you're basically, I know when you first think car wash, you're like, Hey, you know, what's there, to, what's there to bother me. But then all of a sudden you think about those giant mechanical arms that are swinging. And, and I know I'm, I'm ignorant to what exactly how it works, but I'm just assuming the dangers that are involved in there. You take on the risk, right? Right, right. And, and I stand, I trust people to put their car in neutral the first time when I walk in front of it. <laughs> it's, it's just a part of it. That's just part of the game, man. It just, that's how it is. Yeah. But uh, again, War Eagle to everybody. And man, spring practice is about over. So it's about time to get down to business and figure out what we're going to do this season. We talked about this last week. I feel like this has not been a very informative spring. Not that it ever truly is if you break it down. I just don't feel like there's been a ton of like information that we can truly take away yet. Do you feel that same way still? I, I think it's been a much quieter spring than, than last season was. Again, it's it's Hugh Freeze's second year in the program, so it's a little bit quieter right now. Yeah. If if we'd have had a nine win season, we wouldn't have heard anything about basketball. We would have just heard about spring practice, but yeah. that's not the case right now. And, and I get it. I get it. It makes sense. But we're we're still building. I think 2025 is going to be the year that we kind of open up and we see what Auburn's about to be like. But but man, it, it it's been a pretty quiet spring, and I'm okay with it. I, I'm not I'm not upset because I really don't care what you're doing at practice 
unless it translates to the field and and, and the real deal, the, the big games. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those things. I love spring practice because it gives us some football to talk about, like just something. But you know, I've also tried to really put it into perspective as time has gone on, and you know, you hope that we get more mature and wiser as we go, as our hairlines go away and all that stuff. Uh, I've tried to, you know, hone in that. Are we really taking a whole lot? And here, here's the thing: we're talking about spring practice. We talking about practice. We're talking about spring practice before. Uh, the transfer portal when everybody was basically still here. And now we're talking about transfer portal where everything can change after spring practice, when the portal opens up and chaos happens. And I don't know if you, I don't know how many other programs you watch. One, one person that I'll always uh, share is late kick with Josh Pate. Uh, I don't watch a ton of his stuff, but I follow him. So I see a bunch of his clips and stuff and, you know, I, I like what he talks about. I like his perspective on things. And he was talking about one of his clips this week about guys, the things that I'm hearing about what's about to happen this summer in the transfer portal, y'all aren't ready for like just the fact that there are players getting ready to leave, but also the coaches know that's happening and they already have players on other people's squads that are ready to come in. Like the amount of exchange at this point is about to get crazy based on what he said. So Having to be trying to take things away is hard in the spring, even more than it used to be. Yeah, uh, the, right now, man, the transfer portal, especially after that ruling with Tennessee, what was it a week or so ago? Yeah, well, man, the, the transfer portal is a uh, it, it's a it's a bonfire in a pasture. There ain't no rules. It's like, a bonfire in a pasture. Wow, I haven't heard that one lately. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is. That there are no rules. I mean, we're we're going to lose people. We're going to bring people in. Uh, the question remains: Is are they are they pieces that are going to fit in right now this year, or are we going to lose pieces that are fitting in this or, or need to fit in this year? And are we going to are we going to be able to replace those? It's a puzzle with interchangeable pieces right now. Yeah, it, does it match or not? And that that's a big question. So it's. We're really just gonna have to sit here and feel it out, and it it sucks. I get it, but that's that's the state of college football or NFL 2.0, whatever you want to you know categorize it as. But we're gonna lose we're gonna lose some dudes, and I I if I was the kind of I ain't got nothing against gambling, but fifty fifty ain't good enough for me. If I can put <laughs> you an ice cold Coca Cola on which quarterback's leaving, I think it's holding because I think he stands. He's got the most to lose. He can transfer to anywhere within the southeast region to a smaller school and probably get the gig. I mean, he could go to a Southern Miss. He could probably go to – hell, he could probably go to uh, Dane George Tech and, and be, be in the mix. He could go to uh, a South Alabama, a North Florida school, somewhere. I mean, he could go somewhere and do something. And, you know, I don't want to see him sit here and waste his time. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I just don't want to see him go to someone we have a high – potential to see and and i say that out of respect for him because not that we've seen the biggest body of work from him here at auburn but i you know from what i what i'm able to take away from my own viewing of him from what other people have said about him like you said i think he could go a lot of places and start right away i just don't want it to be like let's say uh vanderbilt this year you know because <laughs> we'll see Vander. hey by the way folks did y'all realize we're going to see vanderbilt three years in a row now like last year this year and the am i am i wrong did we see them four years uh, will it be four years in a row no it's three yeah because this year was the year of their end zone not being built next year maybe half of it will be done and then the third year <laughs> um yeah poor vanderbilt they're always they were already the butt of jokes but now they're going to be even worse the butt of jokes um, <laughs> All that money and you still can't get something built. You would think with a bunch of doctors, now I get they're not engineers, but you would think with that many eggheads up there, you could get two people to, you know, throw some hammers around and stuff like that. I know it's not that simple. Listen, if they want the job done, come to Auburn and get their engineering done. By the way, this is not sports related, but did you see that report today of the um the Auburn engineering professors talking about the the bridge collapse in Baltimore about what it, it, I shared it on uh, on X. If you're interested in reading about it, you can find it anywhere. But like two professors, a structural engineer and a civil engineer, both talked about what potentially happened, and it was kind of insightful. It was it's the first time I've seen Auburn like 
respond to a situation with their own expertise and be like, you know, here's what happened. So that was, that was good on them. So I know that's a weird side note, but we somehow got there <laughs> in the transition. Uh, I want to ask you, I, I know, let me go and say to folks, I know I'm behind on recruiting information here and I haven't gotten some videos out to y'all, but you know where I'm going. We just picked up another uh, offensive lineman for 2025, correct? Yes. Yeah. And Buster something or what was his name? Buster. Say it again. I, T -A -I, Ty T-A-I. Ty Buster. I thought yeah. that was it. I know it's early. Maybe don't we don't know a lot about him yet. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I've watched some film on him already. Uh, watched a couple of breakdowns on him. He's he's playing tackle right now, and uh, he also wears my former number, which just excites me to no end being an offensive lineman. But he's 6'3", 280, and I saw one site that he was listed at 6'5", which is a, a two a jump. That's a pretty good jump right there, but – uh, he's, he's clearly not going to play tackle at the collegiate level or the pro level, how far, depending on how far he goes, but, uh, he's going to play guard, uh, at 280. He's got a good frame on him. I think he would probably project as somewhere in the, the six, three, maybe 305, 315, uh, weight range, which is, is 305 is a little small for a guard in the SEC. 315 is not bad. He's got violent hands though. Like when he when he gets a hold of somebody, he he's got you. He's yeah. got a motor on him. He can run. I bet you. I, I bet you a whole other ice cold Coca Cola that dude could outrun me right now. And I'm not a slow guy. Like you know what? On the comment about hands, I think that's lost a lot about the conversation between the dynamic between offensive linemen and defensive linemen. And let me call back uh to and i'm blanking on his name right now but sensei as we used to call him our defensive end who was because he was known for his handwork uh yeah, that he thank you jeff holland i knew it was going to come back to me and it, it took you saying it to get us there but um jeff holland that he was known for his handwork you know and the same thing for the offensive line you got to be able to fight back that off it's not just about feet work it's not just about being big just be about being tall Part of me feels like the the description of skill players not being given to offensive linemen a lot of the time when they have that description. It's not what it means, but there's that connotation that there's not as much skill. I, I beg to differ. <laughs> I've seen what they have to do, what they have to think about, what they have to anticipate. That takes a lot of skill. And I know that's not what they mean, but it's just I've always been intrigued by that description. Oh, I, I'm completely biased towards anything in the trenches and, and especially the A and B gap. But like you've got to be able to get your hands inside their shoulder pads right here. And you can grab their shoulder pads inside their shoulders. You can't grab it out. That's holding. We see that constantly. Mm -hmm. but if you put your hands inside and you can get control of another whole human being and get your shoulder or your head across them and run your feet. If I've got you right here, I can turn you whatever direction I want to. Yep. You can fight it as much as you want. But if I've got great contact, I've got violent hands, I've got a hold of you, you're not really going anywhere unless I allow you to go there. Now, there's a lot of fighting back and forth that goes. And like you're saying with Jeff Holland is as soon as somebody went to get their hands on him, he was moving them away. Whatever he had to do, he was getting the If, if an offensive lineman can't get his hands on you, he really doesn't have much of a chance. So that there's the dichotomy between the two, the two lines. And sometimes it does come down to brute strength of I'm 330 and you're 280. I'm just about to run you flat over. That's that that's just physics at that point and physicality. But man, this kid is he's good and he didn't have a lot of offers. We were like the first power five that gave him an offer. Mm -hmm. And then here comes everybody else and he's sticking with us. Not still 2025. NIL's a deal. Like it could change at, at the drop of a hat. We don't know yet. But I really like this kid. I mean, go watch his highlights on whatever, 247 or on three yeah. or whatever, huddle or something like that. This dude's fast, and he's mean about it, and I love it, and that's good because we brought in more than one offensive lineman, and we brought in specific types of offensive linemen, people that are nasty, dirty, want to get in there. He wants to beat somebody every time the whistle, like every time the ball snaps. He wants to beat somebody, and that's what we got to have if we're going to consistently compete in the SEC and give everybody else a chance to do their jobs for us to win. Absolutely. And that was one of the big emphasis that needed to happen was offensive line recruiting going forward. And it's being at least started right now. 
Uh, I got time for maybe some final comments, thoughts from you, sir. We got another phone caller, but I don't want to run off without you getting your full say in. So what else you got? Well, how about this? War Eagle. I believe in Auburn and love it. Roll leads green wave. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you next. Always good to hear from you, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Yes, sir. All right. That was Mr. Thomas Manville. Thanks for uh, him hanging out with us. And, uh, given his perspectives, we always get taken to school by Thomas, which I always enjoy. Uh, if you guys want to call in, uh, you can get in line right now. We've got another call we're going to take in just a second. Uh, please do take advantage of that. All you got to do is hit the link up at the top of the chat. Obviously, it was easy for Thomas and our next caller, so you can do it too. Uh, you don't have to be on camera like they uh, are. You can just say, I don't want my camera shown. It gives you the option. It can just be your voice. I know that's a weird thing for people sometimes, uh, but uh, love to Here's some more perspectives in person, effectively, even if it's just voices. Let's get into it, and then we'll talk about some of these other comments and questions, but let's talk to our next uh, caller. You know him. You love him. Mr. Optimism. What's up, Kevin? Or Eagle, we, we will be back in the NCAA tournament, basketball tournament next year. I agree with you. I believe you, and I wholeheartedly agree, sir. Uh, the standard has been set by Bruce Pearl. Auburn goes to March Madness, and it should always be that way from now on, for under him at least. How, hey, how many touchdowns do you think Jaquez Hunter will have? Ooh, um, I don't know. So, well, here's here's what I'll tell you. I would hope that he would have as many touchdowns as he plays a game in, and if he's a healthy all year, that would be at least twelve, right? Yeah. And and hopefully we're talking about a thirteenth. For a national, for a, a a conference title, a fourteenth for a first round at least, and a second and a third round of the new playoff. So let's just assume he plays in thirteen games. Let's even if it's not a conference championship, I'm going to say I hope he has fourteen touchdowns. So one more than each game he would play in. If that happens, I'm going to feel really good about what our offense is doing this year. I think um, one of the kind of I'm thinking. One of the wild receivers will have, have one over 1,000 yards. I hope so. It's been a while since we had one of those. If Have we ever had one of those? Uh, <laughs> it's If it has, it's been a while. And I think uh, Ross Kane will score like 10 touchdowns. 10 touchdowns. Well, you will have to tell him that you have those expectations for him and see if he's willing to uphold his end of the bargain for that. Yeah, I, I hope so. I will talk to him at the A-Day game. You will? Well, make sure you get that in and say, look, I'm expecting, uh, you know, 10 touchdowns from you this year, and we're going to talk about you every week on E2C. So if you uh, if you can't get it, we're going to talk about it. So make, make sure you get those 10 touchdowns. And Caleb Burton, his name should be mentioned too. I think so. I think Caleb Burton, I think Jay Fair are going to be your two reg names that we're used to that are going to be the most deal. utilized. Luke Deal. Luke Deal, I think, is he will be utilized in the passing game, but I think Luke's true value comes in his leadership and what he does outside of being a receiving tight end. And that's not taking anything away from him. I just think that's from what we've seen of his body of work, that's his strongest um, attributes to the team. And that is, in some ways, more important than is our the receiving off yards. offense linemen. What about him? Who, who are they? We got a lot of them. I, you, you want me to list all of them off now? <laughs> One of them, Dylan Wade. Dylan Wade, I think, will be a starter uh, next year. And I think that Percy Lewis will be one of your starting tackles. Um, I think Isaiah Miller's probably got a chance to start. Connor Liu has probably got a chance. Tate Johnson may have a chance to slide in there, but you've also got Je Jeremiah Wright. Uh, so it could, there's maybe some interchangeability a little bit for the offensive line, the starting portion of it. But, uh, I think some of the familiar faces will be there. I think Jason Jones will be good on defense. I hope so. We're going to need somebody to step up with the talent that we've lost this last year, losing Marcus uh, Harris, for instance, not necessarily, you know, I would say Jason's more of the true defensive tackle. Marcus was more of a hybrid defensive end, defensive tackle type. So not exactly the same thing, but we're going to need somebody on that interior line to step up a little bit. Do you know? Do you know uh, if 
we might get a running back for the 2025 class? I don't know. Uh, I know the one name I'm familiar with is Alvin Henderson. And last I heard, we were in good standing with him. Um, yeah. My hope is that we can lock him down and with losing Jamarian, uh, Jamarian, I think I should say, Burnett in last year's class, I think, you know, with Jarquez coming back, that made his decision for him. Um, hopefully now that it looks like you know, this is Jarquez's last year, there will be a spot opened up and more time opened up for someone to uh, get a little bit more playing time. And I hope, I, see, I, I hope I see I hope I see you at the A Day game. Yes, sir. You know where I'll be. Come find me right there at the banner at Tiger Walk if they're doing it. Uh, but maybe we'll bump into yeah. each other if we don't see each other there. So I'm looking forward to it, buddy. War Eagle. War Eagle, Kevin. Thank you for calling in tonight. Always good to hear from Kevin. We heard from Kevin. We heard from Thomas, a lot of our regulars. We'd love to see some of you fine folks who haven't called in before to use the phone lines and hang out with us a little bit. Hit, hit that link up above there. Um, all right. More comments, questions, topics to round out our show. Get them in now. I'll hit some of these things that you all were saying during um, our conversations. Let's see here. Um, say what you want about the transfer portal in NIL, but it puts Saban out of Alabama. Uh, I don't know if it was necessary. And he has said, effectively that it was nil and that but let's keep in mind it's not nil and um and that stuff it's what they brought out of the players and their inability to coach so yes it is that but it's the way the youth as they call it is responding to this wild wild west that they have found themselves in and that is what took him out of coaching. I don't care how it happened, just as long as he got out. So as much as, like you said, say what you want about it. Hey, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> uh, Unbeaten Lake says, the only refs the entire tournament to not be moving on to the Sweet 16 are, of course, the ones who got call, who called our game. Uh, is that 100% true? Did My understanding is there was probably a few others that didn't get invited back um because what how many host sites where there's like eight host sites i think maybe not that many but um in the first two rounds and so you would only have about half of those coming back to the four host sites for the sweet 16 so to me uh i think to deny that they did a horrible job. If you all saw that stat is lying, but I think to say maybe they were the only ones is maybe not true. I'm not sure. Um, let me put it to this way. I would not have invited them back. <laughs> it was that bad. Um, big simp. <coughs> Excuse me. Greg Byrne is on the selection committee. I bet he had us going to the Washington to wash going out to Washington and Bama playing the grand Canyon university. A touring destination than Bammers are a joke. Uh, yeah, listen, even if he did, there's a bunch of others there to negate his vote, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm sure that we've had it swing our way with certain members with a af supposed affinity to us on, on boards and stuff in the past. But hey, listen, that helps you. Sure. <laughs> uh, it didn't make a lot of sense. The location, the seating, Decisions that happened in the games. What ha has happened has happened at this point, and that is unfortunate. Corey is predicting a North Carolina. I had to, it took me a second. NCU. Did you do that on purpose or is that a typo? We'll treat Bama like the redheaded stepchild. I um, hope that they are going to get a throttling from UNC. I just don't know that I'm 100% confident about that. And that's not necessarily a uh, reflection on what may or may not happen in the game. I, I, I just, things aren't going well <laughs> for the Auburn fan right now in relation to March Madness. So I'm kind of expecting the worst to happen at this point. But I, I did warn you all that for those of you that were putting your orange and blue glasses on and predicting Alabama out in the first and the second round, that's that was that's not good. 
That was not a good pick. Uh, Corey did some research for us. Uh, and, it, and this is in relation to um, Kevin, who asked a question about who is going to be the one, who would be on Auburn a 1,000 yard receiver this season if there is one. And I said, is there one at all? The last one was in 99, Ronnie Daniels, the last receiver to get over 1,000 yards. It is time. We've had some good receivers since then. But it is time that Auburn returns to form of being more relevant as a wide receiver producing university. And I'm not asking for them to be a wide receiver. You, I'm just asking for them to be more well-known than they are. Maybe Cam Coleman is that thing that sparks us. Maybe it's not, but Hey, it sure looks good on paper right now. So I'll, I'll take it. Um, Big Simp is asking, you think Katie ends up back at Georgia to end his career? <sighs> Seemed like he didn't really have a fondness for them there and that they a fondness for him. So I, I can't see a world where he goes back to Georgia. If they're the best offer he has in terms of playing time, meaning a starting position, then maybe. Um, I, I think Katie's main decision is for playing time. I think that's pretty obvious. If you look at his trend, we pulled up the stat when we did our reaction stream to his announcement of how his playing time has gone down over here. And, and frankly, with very little, at least public, uh, pushback from him because he has been such a great team player this year. And when I say that, I don't mean that in some like, well, he's been a great team player, not really getting many things. He, he's made a difference, in, uh, if not most a lot of our games. Um, so I think his decision comes down to where he gets the most playing time. I haven't heard anything about interest from Georgia, but wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> Especially after the way he behaved and, and acted towards them every time we played them. He did love playing in Georgia and had great games every time we played in Atlanta and Athens, it seemed. So who knows? Corey gives us a little bit more info about the Ronnie Daniels being the last 1,000-yard um, receiver for Auburn. Uh, Coates only had 908 in a season, and he was a good one. Sammy Coates, I think, was the last receiver that had that opportunity to be an upper echelon uh, receiver for Auburn. Now, if you talk about results afterward, Darius Slayton is that because he's found himself on a team in the NFL for quite some time and not just relegated to practice squad he has scored touchdowns in significant games i have had him on my fantasy team as a utility player before because i needed someone and he paid some dividends for me i'll be honest with you so if we talk about production in college sammy Coates was it if we talk about production what happened after you left auburn the le most recent example is darius slayton and that makes me really happy because I think he he felt a lot like an Anthony Mix, not a super apt comparison, but just and if you remember that group, Ben Obamanu, Devin Aramishu, Courtney Taylor, Anthony Mix was kind of like the fourth in that group. Uh, <clears throat> you had Darius Slayton, and I'm, I'm going to forget everybody who was here uh, during that time. You had Seth Williams. You had um, Anthony. Sh well, Seth maybe I've been here, but you had Anthony Schwartz. And I'm blanking on everybody else, which kind of tells you <laughs> right there, <laughs> at least the lasting impact that I've had in my most recent memory right now, uh, not to negate what they did, but he, he kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit. Ryan Davis. He was here when Ryan Davis was here. I think that's right. So um, those would be the two ones other than Ronnie Daniels that I think uh, come to mind when we talk about 1,000 yard receivers and not just 1,000 yard receivers, but who were the big impact wide receivers post their time at Auburn, but also stats wise. Um, <clears throat> most of our save receivers end up in the Canadian League, maybe. <laughs> um, I haven't looked at the Canadian League uh, history to to verify that, but I'll take your word at it. I guess maybe you're just being funny. All right. We are almost at the hour mark. Um, what I would love for you all to do is don't wait. Don't hesitate. If you're wanting to call in, 
Corey, I'm still waiting on you to call in. You've been here long enough. You, I need to hear your voice one time. Don't, you don't have to be on camera. I want to hear your voice one time. Uh, I will leave the phone line open for another like two or three minutes. If you want to get in, do it now. Hit that link. You can be on camera, off camera. Final comments, questions, topics that we have not addressed tonight. Get them in now. Let me remind you of what's coming up next here at E2C Network. As things continue to wind down in the athletic calendar year, we're getting a little bit more stable in our weekly broadcast, which means obviously Wednesday nights, which you're here right now at 8. But then you've got Sunday nights, which is the Auburn Experience, live at 9 on Sunday nights, episode 72 coming up. Keep in mind, two weeks from now on that Sunday, we will we may do a day recording for that live together for a day weekend not confirming that but austin kind of sparked my memory of that possibility on our stream last sunday so just keep that in mind but this sunday 9 eastern time if that's not enough for you we got a baseball live stream uh, after the uab game looking back at texas a&m uh, the weekend that will be at this point but then we'll look ahead to tennessee as well the week seven review and Q&A session, a live stream of sorts, a reaction live stream of sorts for Auburn baseball. And then, of course, we'll be back Wednesday night. That's the planned stuff. That's the tentative plan. But there's always going to be opportunities to get more content here, especially at YouTube. So you need to be subscribed here, but following everywhere for all the content across all the platforms of E2C Network, the Auburn Experience. Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, podcast. TikTok, uh, everywhere we are and everywhere we will try to be. All right, final thoughts, questions, and calls. Another minute, and then we'll close it down for anybody that's wanting to get in line. WT brings up a discussion point that has come up a lot with people. Um, is there a John Mingelt, uh statue at Auburn? If not, is a tr it is a travesty. Well, first of all, on the topic of statues, I will one-up you, sir and say that it is a travesty that Iron Mike Donahue does not have his statue as a head coach for Auburn. Go look at his stats and how that man didn't have his statue be erected right next to Pat Dye, Shug Jordan, and, Cl and Cliff Air, those three that were made together. If you notice, there's a couple open spots next to Cliff Air over there. Uh, <laughs> that spot right next to him needs to be Iron Mike Donahue. He has a street named after him. But anyway, I digress. Let me talk a little bit about this. Uh, statues. We just got a um, uh, Charles Barkley statue in the last decade. Very much deserved. I, I do think it's appropriate for us to honor a women's basketball statue um, recipient, which we know is being discussed and worked on. So for those of you that don't know how to take a chill pill about some of these topics, just take a chill pill. It's, it's, in, it's in the works. Uh, there are some great candidates and I honestly have gone back and forth on who it should be. Ruthie Bolton, Vicki or Susan Nunley. Now I know that's more than just a basketball name, but I don't know that she shouldn't be the first representative of that. Uh, the nun I think may need, and you, I was about to say you, you reserve statues for people who have passed, but all our statues, well, not all of them, a bunch of them are clearly still here anyway. Um, John probably deserves to be in a discussion of sorts there. Only time will tell if he'll get one, but I think we're going to get a women's basketball player before we get John Mingeld at this point. Uh, let's see here. Highest and it's something to go with his discussion. Highest career scoring average at Auburn, 24.8. And I think if you listen to his um, podcast with Andy Burcham, where he interviewed him several weeks, maybe a month or so now at this point, he talked a lot about that. I, uh, his how the differences are between now and then he couldn't do some of those things that um he used to do now or wouldn't have those type of numbers the way he did it donahue that is the i will get fired up about why mike donahue doesn't have his statue yet give mike donahue his statue now you will see me become an activist for that <laughs> Are the statues bronze or plated? I am not an expert on that. And probably it says it in the press releases. If you look at Obby's statue that went up, it's I think it's in similar vein to what's been done. Uh, I think it is... Part of me wants to say that it's like imitating bronze. It's not actual bronze. 
I don't know. It's a good question. Good question. All right. Final thoughts, questions, comments, derogatory rebuttals. Get them in now. This is your final chance. Our phone line is closed. Remember, next live streams, Sunday night, Wednesday night, or excuse me, Tuesday night, and then Wednesday night again next week. We have got to have you following everywhere, subscribing here. If you want to help support what we do here at E2C Network, you can join the Conquer Club by hitting the join button on YouTube, joining through patreon.com slash E2C Network. And we thank you guys that do that and are able to keep the lights on here at E2C Network. But we also appreciate those of you that just stop by, support us by watching, consuming, liking our content. That is just as effective, and we appreciate that as well. We talked about a lot tonight. We talked about... Uh, transfer portal stuff, who's leaving, who may be coming in, Katie Johnson leaving. We mentioned uh, the softball coach announcement of his retiring, Mickey Dean. We talked about uh, Bruce Pearl potential, you know, it, would he ever leave? That somehow got us started off tonight. We talked about uh, offensive lineman recruiting. We covered a gamut of things tonight, which is why I love, I love Wednesday nights because there's no agenda. It's all about you. And that's what we love to do here. The Auburn experience, when it's experienced best, is through the eyes of you. So thank you all for being here, hanging out with us, and being part of the best little family within the Auburn family. And that is the E2C Network family. Until I talk to you guys again, thank you for hanging out. And War Eagle.